Hello and welcome back to the Cozy Club, my friends. My name is Cozy Gamer and I just put out a poll both on my Discord and my YouTube community page. And guys, I was blown away. I put out what video do you guys want to see next that I put out? And it was overwhelmingly the response of get a how to whale or how to what I like to call chubby dolphin or spin gyms in DSA, guys. And in today's video, we're going to go over early, mid, and late game and things to spend or use your money on or gyms on. And then we're also going to be talking about different notes, tips and tricks, things you must or should buy or things you shouldn't buy if you're spending money. Now, as you guys know from my videos, I currently don't have a test account or anything like that. So in order for me to get out content to you guys, yes, I do spend money in DSA and I'm a little bit of what I like to call a chubby dolphin. Now, this is important. I want you guys to put down in the comments below whenever you get to this section. Do you guys want me to do a daily deals or a look at offer reviews or a spenders session videos on the regular talking about certain packs or things that are available within the store? And if you guys want me to give my opinion, if I think they're hot trash or if I think they're worth going after, let me know. I would love to do that. I might incorporate it on my Twitch stream, which Again, guys, join the best community in DSA. We have a blast every single stream, and that's not just exaggeration. It's truly a fun community where we listen to great music, do a lot of DSA and other fun Disney stuff. You can find that down in the description below. I might be doing the Spinner series on Twitch and then get it over to YouTube, but nonetheless, I'm excited to possibly do that. So let me know by liking the video, putting in the comments below that you guys want to see me do some of these more spinning or chubby dolphin videos. All right, it's time to go over some cozy tips for DSA. And let's start with the early game. You're a newer player. And honestly, these are all affected for all levels of play, early, mid, and late. But these are things to focus on or you'll probably see more in your early gameplay, mid gameplay, and late gameplay. The number one things that I can recommend is something that I think people will actually be baffled about. But if you're trying to go all in and catch up and have the characters ready for requirements, then this is going to be the best way to do it. Now, let me just say a quick note. At the moment, there's not really gameplay outside of Club Conquest that you need a multiple or a huge roster for. There's just there's no reason to have outside of your live PVP or your Sorcerer's Tournament 5. Now, if I recommend first, guys, go after your starting five. Make sure you, if you're coming into the game, if you want Kingdom, go hard after Kingdom and then go hard after the gear for Kingdom. You don't want to do Kingdom, get them up to T5, let's say, and then go to Frozen. Make sure you go hard on one specific faction. Sometimes, and a, a lot of times we've been seeing on this channel, is that newer characters mean better characters. And again, that's not all the time. The Toy Story villains were a great team. They're not the best team in the world. But if you were to come in, let's say for Frozen, then yes, obviously to spend your money or to spend your time getting frozen was the right thing to do there rather than just getting character packs. However, if you wanna spend your money to get your roster as big as possible and something that doesn't diminish right away is going after these ultimate chests. Now there are these bundles that you can go after that have several different tokens that you can open. I believe up to 16, you get one of each. So 16 possible chests, you get guaranteed characters, you get a lot of character shards. Now I do wanna mention, yes, sometimes, this could be 80 shards for Zerg, but other times your guaranteed character could be 10 Demona shards. So it's not a guarantee, there is risk involved. But if you want your best bang for your buck for getting a wide roster of characters, this is probably gonna be the best thing for you. Also in early game, whenever you unlock a character for the first time, let's say Captain Jack Sparrow, for example, if you unlock Captain Jack, you're gonna get an offer kind of going between 10 and $20 to further increase that character. Now, in my opinion, if they're found in an exchange store and not on a hard node or something that you could only farm limited times a day, I don't think it's personally worth it. Like for instance, yes, it's tempting to get your Captain Jack Sparrow up and running, but be patient, get him through the club exchange. It's gonna be free and probably what you should be putting that towards anyway early on. Look at tier lists that have been out and evaluate the top characters and then focus on what you should spend your money on from there. And speaking of tier lists, I do have one coming out later this week, guys. I know it's been requested a lot. We wanna get our hands on Stitch and two and bubbles before I put out that new tier list. And then the other thing we will be talking about later in this video is the VIP and the pass holder. And that's something early game that you wanna go ahead and get on. VIP is a great value for what you put in money wise. So I definitely recommend going for that, but let's talk about that later in the video. So whether you're early or mid game, something that I wanna tell everyone right away is something that will hold you back from being in game or meta teams. And that is your player level. Now, if you're going through level one through 60, 
that's where you want to focus on getting the best bang for your buck. You want to get to level 60 as fast as possible. And trust me, guys, it is a grind even if you do spend money. So the best way to do this while multitasking both gear and character shards is to first watch a farming guide, get that team locked down on what you want. And then you want to hit those refresh buttons on both regular energy and grand campaign energy. The regular energy is going to be 50 gems per refresh. You get three of those until it bumps up to 100 gems, which I personally go after the 100 gems and then I stop after that. It depends on my mood for the day or if I really want to start testing or playing with a character. But it's not a bad idea to definitely do those three refreshes as you should be getting those crystals from your VIP and Sorcerer's Tournament. Also, you're going to want to be going after Grand Campaign characters, especially exclusive characters in the Grand Campaign. Let's take Olaf, for example. He's a great person to start investing those gems into. And yes, I stop after it gets to 200. At 100 after three of those, I feel like I got enough farming in for the day. Uh, and so I would recommend probably just going with 100 refreshes for that Grand Campaign unless you're into it. Now, a quick note on this is there's going to be a vary in opinions. Genie, you can only get him from a hard node, right? You can only farm him four times a day, then you can claim a refresh and you got four more attempts. I think it's personally worth putting 50 gems and doing it a couple extra times and getting a little bit extra. Like for myself, if I'm going after, let's say Genie, I go for getting about five shards a day, unless RNG just has no favor for me that day. But I do recommend using a little bit of those 50 gems if you're spinning to unlock those chances more. Let's take Gantu. I know he's hard locked behind that campaign that you can only lock him a little bit. So if you want to get them at a faster rate, that's also a good decision. And the last thing for early level play is going to be these energy packs that you guys are going to see in the store. Now, they're usually a couple bucks. I think the most they get to is about five bucks. These are worth it every time, mainly to get your level guys up there to level 60. If you don't know, for every energy you use is going to be XP that goes towards your level. So getting extra XP, you get some gems and other things on the side. This is worth buying typically no matter your early, mid or late game. Now, I do want to let you all know this isn't only my opinion. I talked to several whales, Kraken, fellow chubby dolphins within DSA uh, to get their opinion on what they personally go after. And it does line up with what I thought as well. So just in case you guys were curious, this isasn't just Cozy's opinion. This is kind of a general chubby dolphins best bang for your best buck. Now let's move on to mid game play and what you should be looking out for during the mid game. So in mid game, you're going to start being introduced to something that all of us global players are introduced to very early on. And I myself am pulling my hair out trying to get this certain resource. And that is ruins, guys. Alpha, beta and gamma ruins. Now, let me tell you, alpha ruins are somewhat easy to get. You'll have a good stockpile of these. However, beta ruins and gamma ruins they start to become a problem, mainly beta ruins, guys. Right now, there's currently no effective way to even buy beta ruins. So when you do see them, I would go ahead and try to grab them. And that's going to be from the premium exchange, which we'll talk about later on, or from different packs. You're going to see an ability ruin pack come up. It's $19.99. I believe you can buy two of them when it does come up. Guys, if you're spinning in DSA and you're a global player as of now, buy these packs. You're going to need these no matter what, especially if you're spinning in other areas of the game, beta ruins is what's going to be holding you guys back. So I recommend going after these ability ruins, especially mid-level play, because that's when your roster gets a little bit bigger and it's harder and harder to spend. Now, if you're more free to play and you're watching this video and you're in mid game, one thing I do recommend too, is when you're getting first through a hundredth place on Sorcerer Tournament, which you should work towards getting there, you're going to be getting free gems each and every day. You'll be getting gems from the VIP pass, whether you're investing big or or small if you're investing small go ahead and take those little bit of gems and save them up for an event or a character that comes out and then put it all towards them you don't always have to buy the new shiniest thing you can be and accept what the team you have is and let's say you've gone in and you've got a lot of oceanic characters that was the route you want to go and then this lilo and stitch event came in right so as a small baby dolphin it would make most sense for you to put all of your hard earned crystals into other oceanic characters to get the most bang for your buck and i've talked about this on many videos but something i want to bring up again is look for faction specificness and what i mean by that and i made up the word specificness frozen can only improve with other frozen characters whereas kingdom oceanic these more general uh, factions are going to grow over time so your investment is going to last a lot more down the line somebody asked me earlier today cozy would you buy frozen right now if you were new into the game and yes i would 
However, I would probably recommend people starting right now to start investing in Kingdom and Oceanic characters because I think Frozen is getting closer to its end of reign on DSA. Now, speaking of events, it's going to be tempting to be going after these new characters as soon as they launch, but we've seen over time more and more that they do release packs for these characters. You can see this in the Frozen event, the Onward event, you name it, and we've seen this come to life. Let's take the Incredibles event, for example. I know everyone wanted Dash, and there was only a few ways to unlock Dash, but if you were to just wait, he did come out in packs later on, or you can just buy him from gyms later on. Overall, usually when things cost specific money and not gems you're going to get a much better value so take here you can see these specific character packs you're going to be getting a guaranteed set amount of shards and items and you know exactly what you're getting whereas on the gym packs you're going to be gambling a little bit more and yes you could strike gold and get the 330 shards but usually you're looking at 10 to 15 shards guys so i do recommend if you are spending money go and actually spend the cash to get the character packs or things that are worth dollar amounts because usually you do see a bit more bang for that buck. All right, Cozy Club, so we've talked about early game, we've talked about mid game. Now let's talk about later in the game as a dolphin, whale, or kraken, what you should be spending your money on. So the first thing that's important is to get a good understanding what it takes truly to get a character to T7. And that's really what's gonna separate the little spenders from the giant krakens, guys. T7 is not an easy task to accomplish now, there's a few things you can do to make this grind a little bit easier because even if you're buying gems and you're going after energy it can take weeks to get one character to t7 because you need all of the previous gear from the other gear levels that you're already putting towards other characters so it starts to really add up so first of all make sure you know exactly who you want to take to t7 or t6 or some of these higher gears and secondly guys here are a few things you can do to make it much easier. These are actually a tremendous value when you look at these gear packs compared to just going and farming the gear itself or going after it. If you want to save time, this is one of the best packs that you can get. And I recommend everybody going after these gear packs. If you do spend money in DSA, it's only going to increase the odds of you getting characters to T7 more and more. Now, if you want to spend even more and get characters geared up, another way or another thing that you can look at is the premium exchange. Now, a lot of free to play members would go here and it blows their mind that people spend these kind of gems to get certain things. So go ahead, go through the characters. You don't have to look at those. I mean, you can you can farm Davy Jones. That might be the best value here because you can only get him through conquest. I personally don't get any characters through the premium exchange. Go right on down to the bottom and you'll see the gear that you can get. Now, guys, this is going to be actually a really good value. And I want to show uh, some comparisons. For example, if you were to just buy all this gear for a T5 thread, you'd be spending 1,320 gems just by buying the brushes and the droplets and everything you would need for the threads. However, if you buy it through the premium exchange, you're looking at 1,150. So you are saving a little bit of cash or a little bit of gems, guys. Now that gap gets even bigger when looking at T6 to T7. When looking at T6, it costs 3,680 gems to get a piece of one of these gears when you just buy them separately. With all the droplets and the brushes, things add up. And don't forget those strange fibers, guys. You always need those. Buy those as often as possible. When in doubt, go after strange fibers. Now, the gear packs are the way to go. But again, if you want to go more for gear, the premium exchange is not a bad option. Now, some other notes for late games. First of all, gems and gems and more gems guys you're going to be purchasing gems if you're spinning in this game and obviously the hundred dollar pack is going to have more especially if you don't spin and you're just a dolphin go and buy those first timer packs they've got great value and you can make those gems go a long way if you're smart about it now this is not more self-promotion but what i'm trying to help you guys with is just because a new character comes out and it's flashy and it's shiny and you want it right away, wait for people like myself or other people to test these characters out first. Wait for the general consensus first. That's personally actually why I started my stream. Why I started a lot of this YouTube videos is so that I can personally take the bearing on myself, try out these characters and see if they're worth investing in for yourselves. I'd like to plug them in on my stream and many different teams, game modes and things like that so that you guys get the best possible image of if this character suits what you're looking for. All right, so we covered the majority of early, mid, and late game and some things to look out for there. And now I want to talk about some overall notes on just 
basic spinning or chubby dolphin habits that you might have in DSA. First of all, take advantage of the tap joy offers. Now, I'm not a huge fan of tap joy. A lot of the stuff in there is garbage you really don't need in the first place. However, there's some hidden gems in getting gems. For example, guys, there's a homeless charity that you can give to or uh, something to help out pets that you do get gems back in return and you're going to get more than if you just bought those gems in the first place. So those are great, not only good things you can do as a person, but you also get currency within DSA. So that's something that I always look out for is giving to the homeless kids in need and then you would get gems back. So if you want a way to maybe feel good about what you're doing, go ahead and do that. Now, I'm not here to tell you to make a budget. You guys are adults and you know exactly what you should be spending on this game and hopefully you're not getting in trouble with anyone, but make sure you have some type of a plan or a budget. Now, even myself, I just don't go willy nilly and buy everything. Now, if you do have the money and the means to do that, now go for it. I'm, I'm not holding that back at all. In fact, if I was there, I would encourage that too. However, make sure that you're buying what you can meet in real life with expectations and you're never putting yourself in a stressful bind. That's one thing I want to make sure I get across in this video. Don't ever buy just so that you can get somewhere in a mobile game and then in real life, you're having struggles, guys. All right, one more tip I want to say as well, and I wasn't doing this until just recently, but there's the 500 crystal spell packs. And these are actually worthwhile, guys. You're going to be getting shards of spells that start to add up. And if you're a Kraken, a whale, or chubby dolphin, or just a dolphin, or even a guppy, it's worth getting these spell packs if you want to get spells up a little bit faster. Now, my biggest PSA I can possibly give you guys is glue has no problem nerfing spells without giving compensation. We've seen this multiple times within DSA. So even I myself, do not go after a spell unless I know it's probably not going to get touched. So for example, right now, Fairy Slumber, it's an amazing spell. However, it's probably going to get nerfed, so I wouldn't invest in that. However, Claw, on the other hand, is a pretty even middle of the pack spell, and it's a very powerful spell, but not something OP that I think Glue is going to nerf. Don't get mad at me if Glue nerfs the Claw. I'm just saying it looks like something that you can invest in. It's a safer bet. Now, this is a very fluid game, and things are going to change as the game progresses, character is going to fall and rise out of the meta. We're going to see Frozen be a laughing stock, I'm sure, within a year from now. So do understand when you invest, try to invest in things that are going to have long value uh, within your DSA journey. For instance, I'm going after Oceanics right now, and that's strictly what I'm putting my money towards is Oceanic characters because I know for the future, I'm going to be getting Moana and all the other Oceanic characters that I want to get. One thing I also want to touch on is being a chubby dolphin isn't buying $100 worth of gems and then spending it as quickly as possible. You wanna see how far and to the fullest extent that you can take those gems. And so spending them wisely is the thing I recommend doing the most. So even though I have, let's say 20,000 gems, once that crystal refresh gets above 100 or 200 gems, it's just not worth it to me. And I might as well just wait the next day and get those refreshes a little bit smaller. Now it was kind of tough trying to appeal to dolphins and krakens and whales and all different varies of how much you spend on this game. But hopefully you got a little bit of a better idea of what to spend. And again, guys, if you want to see me do weekly roster review videos or weekly quick non-edited videos of what I think of this pack or this deal, let me know down below. And that way I can try to help you on your guide along DSA on what is the best bang for your buck. And oh yeah, I forgot one more thing guys, and this is the do not buy list. Do not go and buy things that are on this list. They're not worth the value at all. And just in general, you wanna avoid these things. So the first thing not to buy, we're gonna take a look at the pass holders that come out guys. Pass holders actually have a lot of different gold and ruins and different things and character shards of the characters that are coming out in the event. And I actually think they're somewhat worth the value. However, guys, this isn't like Fortnite or those other pass holder games that you've played. It's very easy to finish a pass holder. And hopefully glue makes it more worth spending your time in DSA and it harder to get through these is actually what I want with bigger rewards. But there is no need to buy tiers or to buy the uh, pass holder plus tiers. There's just no need. You'll finish it within three to five days by just playing this game. So absolutely, I personally would not spend money on going through the pass holder event. Now, some other things not to spend your money on is don't be buying level up potions. Those little potions, Sally potions, you end up with a influx of them, guys. So you don't have to worry. The gold is gonna hit more and faster than the potions are gonna deplete. 
So um, go after, if anything, buy that 499 gold pack. I think you get half a million gold coins in there. That is worth it every single time. You will be crunched for gold no matter how much or how little you spend within DSA. The other thing you don't want to buy is, in my opinion, those spell upgrades. Now you should naturally go ahead and earn these just through doing Towers of Endurance and playing DSA. I wouldn't buy these upgrades personally. It's not worth the gems that you're going to spend. And so I would avoid those entirely. Now let's talk about one of the best values in DSA. And in my opinion, it's that VIP pass. Now the first thing you get with VIP is those gems that we just talked about. Other than that, your cooldown timers on challenges, instead of being 10 minutes and waiting for that time to go down, it is instant. So you can go in, sim those challenges, and really save that time. And that's why I do buy the VIP, is between simming tower and simming these challenges, it's a no brainer for my busy life, guys. And that's mainly why I do spend in this game from time to time is to save time in my own personal life. You get more attempts on elite nodes and club dungeon, which is nice to get a little bit of extra currency each and every day. And then lastly, you get some things that are just major time savers. Number one, you get three times play speed. I pretty much only play on three times. So this is big if you want to go ahead and just go and rock it through a battle. Uh, I do play on slower if I'm doing animations or obviously live PVP. So that's pretty major. Also, you get to auto complete tower, which is huge guys tower five can take a lot of time especially when you first get to those requirements but this is a good time saver there and then also you get more saved team slots which cozy club this is something i'm not seeing enough as go to those team slots save your favorite teams so you can go and select those teams later and you're not wasting time selecting a new team each and every time all right cozy club and that is going to be it hopefully you learned something valuable from this video and better on how to spend your money in dsa and make it go and stretch the furthest that you possibly can. I know my free to play people want to know if I'm gonna get a free to play guide and that's something I do wanna work on eventually. Let me know in the comments below as well if you do want to see a free to play guide and how to make those little crystals go as far as possible guys. We've got some huge videos coming this week, a tier list, tower five guide and more. I'm excited to get it to you guys. Thank you so much for coming to the Cozy Club. And before we say stay cozy, I want to say thank you to my patrons on this screen here. And I want to say thank you to some of the whales that helped me. I'll put some of their names down in the description below, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by, hanging out with me at the Cozy Club. And until next time, stay cozy, my friends.